Okay, everyone, let's get started on the next talk. This is a lightning talk, so I will get handed straight over. Um, the next talk is Finding the Needle in the Twitter Haystack, and I will hand over to the Wicked Clown. Thank you very much. Oh, he's taking a selfie. Uh, okay, thanks very much, everyone. Yeah, there you go. Uh, hi. Um, so, yeah, um, um, this is my talk, Finding the Needle in the Twitter Haystack. Um, um, if, I talk quite fast, so if you're on YouTube, press shift and the arrow, and it slowed down and actually turned into a proper talk. Um, who am I? Uh, what I'm not. I'm not an American. Um, Australian, Canadian, French, German. Uh, I'm not a pen tester. Um, I'm not, definitely not a blue team. I'm not a coder. I do try. Um, I'm very trying. I'm definitely not sober. I'm not a bad guy. So, Mr. American FBI man, please don't arrest me on the way home. Um, but why I am? I'm a wicked clown. I am from the United Kingdom. Um, if you don't know where that is, that's near France, where you guys won the World Cup, the Women's World Cup. Go US. Yay! Um, I am a biker. Um, I am a hacker. Like I said, I'm not a pen tester or Things like that, so I view myself as a hacker. I am a family man to a wonderful family, so I don't get a lot of spare time um, so to do my security research. Um, I am a co founder of DEFCON Gloucester in the UK. I'm also dyslexic. Why do I bring that up? It's the first time I brought it up in public. Um, if you don't know what dyslexic is, it means I have a learning disability, I can't read or write very well. Um, and when you look at other people's talks and presentations, they talk about how they've read an RFC or they've wrote a book or they've done something similar to that. Um, and we look at some of the, when they do the call for papers, they do the presentation, it's like an essay. I can't read 100 words, let alone write 100 words, so I'd like to thank the Recon Village for allowing me to speak here, and if I can inspire anybody with similar disabilities to come up and talk, and that's an achievement unlocked for myself. Um, so I'm going to talk about three tools that I've written um, to view people's tweets, search timeline, and show who they're communicating most with. I know you can do that with Twitter, with the GUI, so I'm going to explain a bit more uh, of it and what's the difference between my tools and doing it online. Uh, before I go on that, I want to talk about the Lockheed Martin server kill chain. It'll all make sense in a minute. Um, if you don't know what this is, it's what Lockheed Martin says that as a bad guy, we have to take each of those steps and get, be successful in each one. And the defender has to be right once. They just have to block us on either uh, delivery, exploitation. They can block us there, then it's game over for us. Which is true, but in my head, like I said, it doesn't quite work very well. This is how I view it. Um, if you're colorblind, the red are the up and down, and blue, left and right arrows. So, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because with Recon, this is where we can spend most of our time and effort in. Blue team has zero availability of what we're doing. So, we can actually hide there, do what there. More information, more Recon we get. I know I'm teaching, preaching to the choir here, but more Recon we do makes our jobs more successful. So, when it gets to weaponization, this is where the blue team starts to make build up. They, if, we, if they're only running Windows operating systems, they don't care about Linux exploits. So that means they're only concentrating on that. So it means we've got now focus on our efforts into Windows exploits because all the Linux ones no longer exist. When it moves down to delivery, it's 50-50. Blue team can't just shut off the um, internet. They can't just block all emails. So we now have to hide in that information. We need to hide to make sure the emails that's going through the system is, looks legitimate and any packets we send are go through. When it gets down to exploitation, this is our hardest bit as the attacker. Reason is because we have to make sure that we break that system. It's the easiest job for the blue team. Because all they have to do is make, if they've got good patch manager in place, good user training in place, good user awareness, it's going to be very hard for us to exploit it. So we have to make sure that the recon, everything we do in recon, funnels down to that point so we can be successful. But then once we get past exploitation, this is where we have blue team on the back foot. We can then use installation so we can actually then start pivoting going through the network and they're going to try to get rid of us. Once they get rid of once we get command and control on other boxes, we can laterally move and pivot. So we can actually, so if they take out one host, we still hopefully have persistence somewhere else to exploit. Then we get to um, actions on projectors when we actually have full control of the network. Blue team are struggling, they're in a massive firefight, and then we pretty much own the network. So the reason why I brought this up because I said recon is the most important phase in my understanding of this. So this is the reason why I've written this tool, uh, or my tools. So basically, I'm going to look at my friend of mine, Christian Riley. I've asked his permission to do this, so it's okay. The um, reason I picked on him, because he's a prolific tweeter. Um, he's done loads of tweets. Um, he's got loads of people following him, and it's going to be really hard to get some info and intel on him. So first we can view the tweets. Um, what this tool does, it actually just shows the tweets and retweets. It, uh, sorry, tweets and replies. It doesn't show the retweets. I don't really care about what other people are saying when Chris Ron Dryley tweets or retweets. I want to know how to get inside of his head, which is a very scary place at the best of times, but I want to get inside, I need to understand him if I want to be exploited. Um, so 
if it's, if it's a retweet, I'm not interested. I want to know what he's tweeting, what he's talking about, what he's thinking, what he's thinking. I need to understand his communication. I also want to search his timeline. The thing is that with, um, I just use it on the GUI one, it puts it in just random order. Um, here, it actually puts it in chronological order. So it makes it really easy to actually get that information out. So if I need to extract, so if I'm doing a search on a conference or something he's attending and he's hashtagging it, that means I'm going to get all that information there and then. So I'll be able to find his movements, understand how he's doing, what he's moving, what he's talking about, instead of going through all the search ones to try to find a bit of information. This is the bit I find most useful. Um, it actually does count how many mentions that they're using. I don't know if you could do this on the GUI front end itself. So we see here there we've got uh, SBLF, where we're in the last one, 2021 tells, bow down 130, digit ninja 100 times. So these are the people he's actually talking to, communicating with. So these are now, we've got a circle of trust. This is where we actually believe he's actually communicating more with, he's actually talking to. So if we can exploit that trust, we can then hopefully exploit him. So and it also gives us more information about his hobbies and interests and stuff like that. So let's put it together and let's see if we can actually make this work. Come on screen. Is it going to pop up? Yeah. Come on, there we go. Thank you. Okay. So, um, I'm in the wrong place to start off with. Oh. All right. So, if we do search his um, tweets, let's hope he hasn't put anything dodgy up. So now we see all his tweets, um, but it also puts it in, um, so it's a little easier to see. And if we actually look at his tweets here, it's pretty hard to actually look for you, see what's actually going on. Um, we see he's got a retweet there. Um, he's got a few other tweets, but if we look here, we can actually see his tweets, and it's easier for us to view and see. It makes it a bit more easier to consume the information. If you want to search now, do. Um, search like his users. So it's now going to retrieve all his mentions that he talks about people. So it takes a few seconds for it to come back. And you see here we've got like SB of Alexia, 220, Belgan 143, D 102. But we also now understand his interests. We've got DJ Jackie Lope there. We have um, Duoco Music here. So we now understand his music taste as well. So by using this information, we hopefully be able to get some sort of more successful payload by doing the recon on. And when we, how many of us is actually, somebody sends you a link from a trusted source, you're more likely to click it, click, it, click the link, open it, or do something else than somebody from somebody you don't know. So this is the reason why we do this. Um, we also look at, his, so if we look at his search, do searches, and we search for Chris John Riley, and we search for Digi Ninja, because he's been speaking lots to him. So we now can see that he's, we've seen the conversation going here. But now if we actually um, do the same thing again, but this time flip it around, so we go, um, and this time we do the search, but this time we do um, Digi Ninja. This is the first time I've done a demo live. Normally I do a video because I talk too fast and it slows me down. Um, Chris John Riley. So now when it comes back, let's go up here, go up to the top. and go to the top here again. So now we can see the conversation that's happening between the two. So we, for example, here it says, maybe, um, um, yeah, let's go that bit. Has, is there an equivalent RAM of a sushi boot? Um, a rampant boat with liquid inside, surely that'll sink. Um, maybe float sushi boot on the RAM. Now that sounds like a pipe boat. So now we're seeing conversation between him and other people. So we can actually look at his, how he's talking to people and how people are interacting with him. This just gives us, makes us more, uh, doing a phishing attack a lot more high chance of success to actually do that. So if we actually try and look at that now on Twitter, um, when we try to try to see the same conversations going and doing the search, we can see now it's all dotted all over the place. We hear from this year, last year, this year, 
uh, this year, last year, this year, last year. So when we do the search, it's not in a chronological order. So it's trying to actually find the information that we need to use to be able to exploit him. Oops, go away. So, but we're seeing there how we're um, looking at person with conversation, talking with each other, um, how we'd be able to get that information to be able to understand what's going on. But what about companies and organizations that are just broadcasting? Um, if you like Donald Trump, he just broadcasts information. He doesn't actually have conversation with people on Twitter. Companies just broadcast information on Twitter. So as soon as we mentioned Lockheed Martin, we rely on Lockheed Martin's uh, Twitter feed. So we see here, we do the same, do the search, um, and we see that RAM and blur bows Base 156, F35 into 33. So we're also seeing there that we have high confidence now that this is an official Lockheed Martin Twitter feed because we're actually seeing mentions that would actually we'd expect Lockheed Martin to see. We're not seeing um, Bieber there or somebody else, um, Spice Girls or something there that we can actually we actually know that this is somebody's. It's not somebody spoofing Lockheed Martin. This is actually a Lockheed Martin's um, website thing. So we look at Ram and Bros. You see, it's that's Rick Ambrose, he's the leader of space. So we actually have a human to actually target. We can do like the supply chain targeting. We're not better get into Lockheed Martin, but we might be able to exploit him to actually be in, pivot our way into it. Remember, we have the F-35 there. So we look at the F-35 Twitter feed again. We see uh, Lockheed Martin, Luke Air Force Base, Royal Air Force. So we now know that this is, again, an official um, Twitter feed from Lockheed Martin. We have very high confidence of that. But you also see there called Billy Flynn. We look at Billy Flynn, he's the F-35 test pilot. So this is now giving us information, insight on somebody else. I'm not going to be able to tap the F-35. I can't stop the F-35 from flying. But if I can take down the F-35 pilot, the F-35 doesn't fly. It's a very clear plane, but I believe it still needs a pilot to actually take off. So yeah, so quickly, that's the end of it. Um, so the, you do need to register with Twitter to get yourself a, uh, um, what's the word, delivery license um, code to actually be able to communicate with it. Um, you are also limited to 3,000 tweets. Uh, per search, which I don't think is a restriction. So someone like Christian Ryder, who's constantly tweeting all the time, I want to see the latest tweets, the latest information, the latest people he's talking to, because if I try and spoof somebody that's three, four years ago, I think their email has been compromised and they're not going to uh, believe it or what, what they're talking to. So I need to have that up-to-date information for them to actually be able to believe it's working. So um, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. I'll talk quick, get us back in time. Um, so yeah, that's if you want more information, um, yeah, there you go. Thank you much.